wanderer, just he gambles, he's just pretty much not a good guy. In this scene, um, when Austin's agent comes, he starts talking to Lee and decides to pick up Lee's movie idea instead of Austin's. And in this scene, they kind of switch roles where Lee is now trying to write a screenplay while Austin is being the one that's disturbing everything. So there you much of a chance. Between me, the coyotes, and the crickets. What a great title. I'm not looking for a title. I'm looking for a thought. Here's a thought for you. Here's I'm not thought. asking for your thoughts. I can do this thing on my own. You're going to write an entire screenplay on your own? That's right. Here's the thought for you. Saul Cameron. Shut up. No, he thinks we're the same person. Don't get cute. He does. Poor old Saul, he has lost his mind. He thinks that you and I are one and the same. Don't cheese up on that champagne. This isn't champagne anymore. We went through the champagne a long time ago. This is serious stuff. Today is the champagne. Long why don't you go outside and drink? I'm enjoying your company, Lee. For the first time since your arrival, I'm finally enjoying your company. And now, now, now you want me to go outside and drink alone? That's right. What? Oh, you think you'll get more accomplished if you're alone? You might drive yourself crazy. You know what? I had this thing done tonight. I had a little fight. You still have, you still have the crickets to contend with. The coyotes. The sounds of the. The police helicopters prowling over the neighborhood, flashing their searchlights down through the street, hunting for the lights. I'm a screenwriter now. I'm legitimate. Ha! A screenwriter. I'm on salary. I've got an advance coming. That's more I can say for you. <laughs> this is true. This is very true. An advance. Cool. Well, maybe I ought to. Maybe I ought to go out and try my, try my hand at your trade, since you're doing so good at mine. Huh. What? Why not? What? Well, you, you don't think I've got what it takes to, to sneak into people's houses and steal their TVs? You couldn't steal a toaster without losing your lunch. You don't, you don't think I could sneak into somebody's house and steal a toaster? Go take a shower. You, you really don't think I can steal a crummy toaster? But, but how much do you want to bet? How much do you want to bet I can't steal a toaster? Oh, come on, how much? Oh, you're a gambler, right? You tell me how much you're willing to put on the line. Some part of your big advance? Oh. Oh, you haven't got that yet, have you? I, I forgot. Okay. I'll bet you your car that you can't steal a toaster without getting busted. You've already got my car. Your house, then. What are you gonna give me? I'm, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about my house or my car. I'm talking about what are, what are you gonna give me? You got you got nothing to give me. I'll give you shared screen credit. How about that? I'll have it I'll have it put in the contract. But this was written by the both of us. I don't want my name on that piece of shit. I want something of value. Do you have, do you have anything of value? Do you, do you have any little tidbit from the desert? Do you have any rattlesnake bones? I mean, I'm, I'm not a greedy man. Any small personal treasure will suffice. Get your ass out in a minute. 
Oh, now you're, you're going to kick me out? Now I'm, I'm the intruder? I'm the one invading your precious privacy? I'm trying to do some screenwriting here. <coughs> well, looks like you've got everything you need. You've got plenty of coffee, groceries, you got a car, a contract, you might need a new chair. <laughs> but other than that, I'm pretty well set. I just going to leave you alone for a little while. Well, where are you going? Don't worry about me. I'm not the one that needs worried about. What, are you just... Are you just going to go wander out in the night? I'm going to make a little tour. I'm just going to bed for Pete's sake. Make it sick. Don't! Don't! I can take care of myself. Don't! For you? My wife? Yeah. Maybe she can help you. Shop here or something. She's 500 miles away. Just north. North of here. Way, way up in the north country where, where things are calm. I don't need you to help. I'm going to go out. And I'm going to steal the toast. I may even commit bigger crimes. That's crimes bigger than you ever dreamed of. Crimes beyond the imagination. Hang on, Nick. Why? What for? What? You don't need me, right? You, you got a handle on the project. Stop. I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the night. <laughs> the bushes. The smell of the orange blossoms. The rain. Bird sprinklers. Dust in people's driveways. Lights in people's houses. You're right. You're right about the lights, Lee. I mean, people are living the life down here, indoors, safe. This is a paradise. We are we are living in a paradise. We've forgotten. So I'm just like the old man now. We we all we all found a light when we're when we're drunk. I mean, we all just sort of echo each other. Well, maybe. If we work on this together, we can get him back out here, you know? We could get him settled down this place. I don't want him out here. I've had it with him. I, w I went out there. I went out of my way. I gave him money. And all he did was play Al Golden <coughs> records and spit at me. I gave them money. Just tell me about the characters a little bit. Characters? The guy, the guy in the story, I, I can hear him talking, but I can't put it down on paper. What, what characters? The guys, the, the guys in the story. These are not characters. I don't care what you call them. I need to write something down. These are illusions. Okay. I really don't give a damn what you call them. You know what to do. These these are these are fantasies of a long lost boyhood. Oh, I've got to write something down on paper. What what for? Saul's gonna get you a fancy screenwriter, isn't he? I want to do it on my own. <laughs> then then do it. You bold out your way to contention. Now you gotta you gotta get through. It. Carry it through. Well, I just need a little advice at all. I, I, I seem to help me get them started. Oh, and now, now you're having a little doubt, are you? What happened? Oh, pressure's on, boy. This is it. You gotta, you gotta do it now. You don't come out with a winner your first time out. They just, they just cut your head off. There's no second chance. I got a good story. I know I got a good story. I just need a little help, is all. Oh no, no, not, not from me, not from your little old brother. I'm retired. Austin, he could save this thing for me. I give you half the money, I would. With this kind of money, I'd be a long ways down the road. I'd disappear. You'd never see me again. You disappeared? I would for sure. 
Where would you disappear to? That don't matter. I've, I've got plenty of places. Oh, nobody can disappear. The old man tried that. And look at, what, look at where I got him. He flew off his teeth. He never had any money. No, I don't mean that. I mean, he, he lost his real teeth. Then he lost his false teeth. <laughs> <laughs> never do that, did you? never confided. No. I never knew about that. You want a drink? Yeah, he lost his real teeth one at a time. Every morning he'd wake up and there'd be another one lying on the mattress beside him. Finally, he, he decided that he had to get them all pulled out, but he didn't have any money. So, middle of Arizona, no money and no insurance. Where did he? I don't know. I don't know about that. He begs the government, right? Uh, so a GI bill or some damn thing, some some pension he has at the back of his mind. And they send him the money. They did? Yeah, they send him the money, but it's not enough money. I mean, it costs a lot to have all your teeth yanked out. I mean, they're charged by the individual tooth. I mean, like, each one tooth isn't equal to another tooth. Some are more expensive. Like, as a red one and a back. So what happened? Oh, well, he, he found his Mexican dentist down, down in Juarez. <laughs> do you think for a song? So he took off hitchhiking for the border. Hitchhiking? Yeah. How, how long do you think it takes him? How long do you think it takes him to get to the border? A man his age. I don't know. Eight days. Eight days. In the sun and the rain and every day another tooth falling out on the blacktop and no one will pick him up because his mouth's full of blood. Finally, finally, he stumbles into the dentist. Dennis takes all his money, takes takes all his teeth, and there he is in Mexico with his gums all sewed up and his pockets empty. That's it. I went out to see him. So I, I took him out to a nice Chinese dinner, but he he, he doesn't eat. He just wants to. Drink martinis out of the little plastic cups, and and so so we we got the waitress for one of the uh, one of them uh, doggy bags. Put the chop suey in, and so he takes his teeth out because he can't stand the feel of them. Chops his teeth in there with the chop suey. After that, we went out to all the bars up and down the highway because he wanted to introduce me to his, to his buddies. And in one of those bars up and down the highway. And in one of those bars, up and down the highway, he left that doggy bag with his teeth lying in the chop suey. <laughs> never found it? <coughs> like it looked. But we never did find it. It's a true story.